Good morning for everybody. Thank you so much for this invitation. I come to bring you some news from South America and Brazil. Unfortunately, they are not good news, but I think it's very important to discuss with you all these new conditions we have in our region. Actually, in the 90s, we have, after a period of military dictatorship, made achievements. Our new constitution in 1988 defines health as a human right, and it creates the unified health system, as you call it in Portuguese, SUS, which in practice brings many, many advances for the health of people. It increases the vaccination coverage, the prenatal and childbirth care, universalizes oral hydration, implements the community health agents program as well as the family health program, implements emergency care program and pharmaceutical assistance, it strengthens the health surveillance systems. As results, the SUS reduced the incidence of disease susceptible to prevent by vaccines, reduce infant mortality, increases population life expectancy. Of course, these achievements are not the results only from only the health sector activities, but it considers the whole context and we had during these times, the inflation control that used to be a big, big problem for us. But also, the characteristics of our new health systems, healthcare systems. The decentralization was very important as the many municipalities, as local authorities, take charge for the provision of healthcare. And also, the strengthening of social participation. Each town, each city in the, in the country has to have its health council, which means the participation of representatives from the public, from the healthcare users, in defining the priorities of health policies. Besides the achievement, it remains many challenges. Some of them are the persistence of communicable disease as tuberculosis, malaria, with high prevalence. Also, the increase of non-communicable diseases as diabetes, as hypertension, that due to the change in the style of life begins to increase. As well, we have new problems emerging as dengue and more recently Zika, and even now, the threat of re-urbanization of yellow fever. Besides that, we have a growing problem of violence. Homicides is a public health problem in Brazil. And as Dr. Shin has just talked to us, inequities persist all the period as a very important problem. Even among the different regions of the country, but also in each region. The beginning of the new century brought many hope for us. We had important economic growth, and, and more than that, important economic dis distribution. The minimum wage increased steadily during 10 years, and also the Conditional cash transfers program were very important in distributing the income. At the same time, we have an expansion of the public health services and the creation of new programs as mental health care with disinstitutionalization of patients and also the oral health care that was a novelty in, this, in our health policies. But then we had the global economic crisis that in the first moment was well, well managed by the Brazilian government with counter-cyclical measures. 
but in 2011, we were not able to manage this crisis anymore, and it strongly affected the country. The GDP, which grew 4.5% a year between 2004 and 2011, falls to a retraction of 3.8% in 2015. Unemployment rises from 6.5% in 2014 to 12% in 2016. The new measures taken by the Rousseff government are ineffective in dealing with this crisis. Mass demonstrations erupt in all cities in the country, and the popular support for the government falls quickly. The economic crisis leads to a political crisis, and its combination it strengthens the opposition, and the National Congress approves the Rousseff's impeachment. Based on accusations of maneuvers, accountant maneuvers, something that used to be done by several governments before Rousseff and continues to be done after her government. The Vice President Temer takes off as the new president and adopts a new political program based on what's called fiscal authority. And he makes explicit his central goal to ensure primary surplus in public accounts so as not to compromise the public debt serves that represents almost half of the federal budget. A constitutional amendment was approved and it establishes the inflation index of the previous year as the annual ceiling for the growth of the government spending for the next 20 years. Estimates of the impact of this amendment indicate that the federal health spending in 2036 will represent only 1.2% of GDP, existing the current 1.7, that's not so much. In per capita terms, spending will be fixed will be freezed, will be frozen at $156 for the next 20 years. These represent really threats. There are good evidence, our colleague Martin Maki showed in the first plenary, that the so-called austerity policies generate job loss, increased unemployment and impoverishment. These conditions compromise mental health with increased incidence of stress, alcohol abuse, the increase of suicide cases, and also the increase of prevalence of chronic as well as infectious diseases, particularly in vulnerable population. And still today, large parts of the Brazilian population lives in a condition of social vulnerability. There are at least 14 million families whose income does not exceed $57 per capita per month. They are people who receive the cash transfer from the program, the, the governmental program. A real health tragedy may occur if the government can implement the newly approved austerity measures. But also, besides threats to health care, to health, the right to health, there are threats to democracy. In 2014, the then candidate of the opposition to the President of the Republic proposed this fiscal authority policy, and he was defeated mainly because of this proposition. Thus, the Temer government begins under a double illegitimacy, based on a process of impeachment without a proof of prime of responsibility by President Rousseff and adopting an economic policy already rejected by the voters. An attack on the democratic regime accompanies the due respect of social rights. 
is not only the freezing of spending in healthcare, but we have approved, the National Brazilian Congress has approved a labor reform that ends many rights of worker, as, for example, the limit of hours of work per week, arrangements between employers and employees are more important and can be overstate what's defined in law. How can unions, workers' unions, negotiate any rights in a context of high unemployment, where the sector that employs much many people, the great part of workers, are constru civil constructions where there is no strong unions. It's under discussion a social security reform that establishes the age of six, five years old to get right to retirement. And you have to work 49 years of contribution to have right to the retirement in the same amount of your salary. In the Northeast region, the poorest region of Brazil, life expectancy is no more than 65 years, the limit proposed by this social security reform. It's in discussion right now in the National Congress, and I hope it will not be approved as it's at its proposed by the government. But the approval, it was already done, of the constitutional amendment that freezes social spending, deepens this attack on democracy. It changed without a new constitution, the more modifiable clause, such as the right to health and education, defined as a human right. It would not be possible to change this clause of the Constitution if you were in a normal democratic regime. So, what's coming next? That's the question who will resolve the democratic people in the country, in the region now. This program, this political program, is not sustainable in a democratic terms. It was defeated once in the electoral campaign. How do the current coalition in power think of sustaining itself politically? They have no votes. Will they try to stop the general elections next year? Many specialists, many experts, many political activists, human rights activists are raising this question wanted their social rights. Will the Brazilians lose their political rights and democratic freedom? I hope not. Thank you. <laughs>